A highway in East Macon, and you're bound to notice at least one person trying to cross the street with no crosswalk in sight. It has led to countless accidents and deaths over the years and a push for improvements. But the county's Pedestrian Safety Review Board can only make recommendations, and the county says its hands are tied. They say only the Department of Transportation can make the changes. Here's Anthony Montalto with tonight's 13 Investigates. Every morning I get up, she'll be on the outside. But in the morning time now, it's hard to get up to go out there and she's not there. An empty chair on the porch leaves an empty spot in the hearts of those who knew Irene Stubbs. That's the lady that rocked me when I cried at night. That's the one that rocks me. That's the one that rocked this one too. A caring woman who loved her family and took names in a game of spades. You on the table with her? You want to get up because she's going to tell you, come on Ryan in some corner, I got you. You ready, baby sister? We're going to get them. Faithful. Prayerful. She loved being in the choir. Kind to everyone she met. She loved everyone. I mean everyone. She gave your clothes off her back. July 16th, 2021, this family lost their beacon of light. The way my sister left us, that's what hurts. A driver hit her in the intersection of Wood Valley Road and Clinton Road and sped off. A few months later, Macon Bibb commissioners renamed their complete streets policy after Irene Stubbs. They promised lighting, sidewalks, and more to keep pedestrians safe. But almost nine months later, nothing. It may seem like nothing has happened, but there are incremental things that have been done throughout the years. In 2016, the county and Georgia Department of Transportation highlighted Gray Highway from Sherling Drive to the Jones County line as a safety concern. That report took data from 2012 to 2016 and shows at least one pedestrian death just steps away from where Stubbs was killed. Seven more pedestrians died along the highway in that time, four more seriously injured. Years later, some leaders like County Manager Keith Moffitt are adamant they've done some of the work. To say that we didn't do anything for the plan is not true. But Greg Brown, who chairs the county's Pedestrian Safety Review Board, says nothing's been done. He blames communication issues with GDOT. Over the years with GDOT, it really uh, was minimum communication. He says the county's power is limited in this situation since GDOT manages the road. There are some things they can do, though, with GDOT's blessing. Not nothing necessarily in terms of uh, making any type of improvements or uh, modifications to the roadway. They can add lighting and improved signage. Brown says that's on the table in future talks. But as for why nothing happened sooner, Moffitt says they simply didn't know who to call. When the roads are readily identifiable, then people know. But sometimes, you know, we live in this community and we're blind to those to those signs sometimes. And so we really don't know, OK, is this a state route or is this a county road? Drive on Gray Highway and the state route signs are hard to miss. A five minute Google search shows you Gray Highway is both State Route 11 and 22 and U.S. Route 129. People have an expectation that their issues are being addressed, uh, but I would tell you whether it's a state route or a county road, road, if you let us know, we will respond accordingly. The county is working with GDOT again at quarterly summits to identify more problem areas like Eisenhower Parkway and Pinona Avenue. But six years after the Gray Highway report, there are no additional sidewalks, no additional lighting, and no more crosswalks. No end in sight for the pain families like Irene Stubbs's feel every single day. Is our heart empty? That's a void? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a big void. But we hold on to the memories that she left us. GDOT declined to comment for this story and instead sent us a statement. They say they're working with Macon Bib officials to prioritize safety solutions throughout the Gray Highway Corridor. They say the transportation planning process GDOT and the county are working on will include Gray Highway. The question that remains, though, is how much longer before families see some results. For 13 Investigates, I'm Anthony Montalto. And we have a copy of that full statement now on 13WMAZ.com. The county's next summit with GDOT is in November. Then they plan to continue working to identify the top five most dangerous stretches of road in Macon Bibb and also find the root causes as to why those stretches of road are so dangerous.